Until now, we talk about the direction of the instrument. Now we will calculate direction of the in the, the magnitude of the in this current or in this moment. Lanzo does not help us for finding the direction, the magnitude of the induced EMF. Lanzo does not help us to find the magnitude of the induced EMF. So another rule known as Faraday's law will help us to calculate how much induced EMF uh, is measured when there was a change in magnetic flux. If there's an induced EMF only if you make a change in magnetic flux. It was the keyword of electromagnetic induction. There must be a change in magnetic flux. So that's why in Paradise law must include a delta t, delta phi, which is change in magnetic flux. So as you see in here, we have delta phi. If this change is big, in this EMF is accepted to be greater. If this change is smaller, you expect in this EMF to be smaller. If this change is zero, you expect there is no change in magnetic flux, there is no in this EMF. That's why delta phi is going to be in the numerator of this equation, directly proportional. So in this EMF, E epsilon is directly proportional to the change in magnetic flux. Second, how quickly you make this change or how slowly you make this change is also affects in this EMF. If you make a quicker change, so you are going to induce a greater EMF, we observed this before by using this device. But if you make this change slower, in this EMF will be uh, smaller. Yeah, delta T. Delta T is also important. Delta T is the time during which magnetic flux change in second. So, because faster, Quicker change, smaller delta T, smaller delta T causes a greater EMF. That's why delta T is going to be in denominator. Delta phi over delta T. But if there are more than one loops, we will multiply delta phi over delta T by n, number of turns or number of loops. So in this coil, because there are several loops, that's why we can measure a greater in this EMF. But if it's a single loop, it's not going to solve that correct. So that's why you should multiply delta phi over delta t, which is in this EMF in single loop, by multiplying n number of loops. And also the equation has a negative sign, you see that? This negative sign is coming from Lamb's law. Remember, Lamb's law opposes the change in the applied field, opposes. That opposes gives this equation the negative sign. So, the negative sign indicates the induced field opposes the change in apply that opposes as a word as in your negative sign. Then, equation for induced field is negative delta phi divided by delta t multiplied by m. And this delta phi over delta t in mathematics is called as the time rate of change of magnetic flux. In fact, you learn in mathematics rate of change. Rate of change. Delta phi over delta t is also rate of change. But rate of change of what? What is changing? What quantity is changing? Delta phi. Delta phi over delta t is the time rate of change of magnetic flux. Uh, maybe they can ask a question to you. What is the time rate of change of magnetic flux? When they ask like this, we will calculate delta phi over delta t. Okay? So now let's solve a problem about this. Problems are very easy, not so hard in this section. Time far that long is the easiest part. A coil with 205 turns of wire. So N is 205 turns. N is equal to 205. A total resistance. Of course, every wire has a resistance. So it's a coil. Coil also has its own resistance. <coughs> we studied this before. So what then R is equal to how much? 23 ohm. R is equal to 23 ohms. And K 
cross section area of the of uh, of 1.25 meters square. And this coil has a cross section area of 20 0.25 meters square. What does cross section area mean? This area, when you cross it, this coil, this area is its cross section area. Area of this uh, tube is cross section area. So this area is given as 0.25. So this is the area, cross-section area. Area is equal to 0.25 meters squared. And this coil is positioned in a magnetic field with its plane perpendicular to the field. Perpendicular to the field. If area perpendicular to the magnetic field, maximum magnetic flux is calculated, remember? Uh, in section 1 of chapter 5, I told you that there will be such explanations. Many questions will be written like this. Yani, area will be perpendicular to magnetic field. Maximum magnetic flux will be calculated. How can we calculate maximum magnetic flux? Area multiplied by magnetic field, 8 and 3. No cosine theta, we have in this case. So, perpendicular to the field of the powerful electromagnet. What is the average current? Current is the question. Average in this current. Now the I is a question. In this current, in the coil, during this 0.25 seconds, 0.25 seconds is delta T. Delta T is 0.25 seconds. That the magnetic field drops from 1.6 Tesla to 0. Drops. What does it drop mean? Decrease. It decreases from 1.6 Tesla. This is initial magnetic field to zero Tesla. Final magnetic field. Okay, if it's a drop, how much this change in magnetic field is negative or positive? Negative. Every decrease is a negative change. Every increase is a positive change. So this drop is the decrease. How much is decrease delta B? I will write it delta B change in magnetic field. Delta B, it's the negative change. How much? From 1.6 to 0. 0 minus 1.6. 0 minus 1.6, negative 1.6. Negative 1.6 Tesla. Negative 1.6 Tesla is the change in magnetic field. Calculate current, but current cannot be calculated directly. Faraday's law is not about the induced current, it's about induced EMF. So first I will calculate induced EMF after using Ohm's law, word remember, I'm going to calculate I. First I should calculate induced EMF, then I have to use Ohm's law for calculating electric current. Directly we cannot do that. So induced EMF equation is negative delta phi over Delta T multiplied by F. There's a change in magnetic flux because of the change in magnetic field. Okay, I know that phi is equal to A times B, correct? This is if magnetic flux is constant. But magnetic flux is not constant here. Magnetic flux is changing. Why? Because there is a change in magnetic field. Delta B. Of course, this book delta B must cause a delta phi. Instead of delta phi, what am I going to write? A times B. delta B. Let's insert it here. E is equal to negative A times delta B divided by delta T multiplied by N. Now that we insert the numbers. So area is how much? 0.25. How much is delta B? One, negative, don't forget negative, negative 1.6. Divided by delta T, how? Delta T how much? Again 0.25. How much is N? Multiplied by 205. This 0.25 and that 0.25 will simplify. Negative times negative changes to positive. Positive 328 volts. So this is induced EMF. 
But question is not in this here. Question is in this current. Question is in this current. I mean, Q's Ohm's law. Word. We will change this word to ear now because we have epsilon here. So we, in fact, similar, same thing, but the symbols are different. So potential difference is equal to electric contact resistance. Now, when you say the potential difference, we are going to write in this EMF, get epsilon. Epsilon is equal to I times R. So epsilon we calculated. R is given. How much is electric current? Calculate electric current. So by dividing R both sides, I can get it. I is equal to E divided by R. E is positive 328. R is how much? R is 23. Divide them. Positive 14.3 yep. ampere. So in your choices, they will give you answer as both positive and negative. Yeah, choice A, if choice A is positive 14.3 ampere, choice B will be negative 14.3 ampere. So which one is correct answer? A. A. So you should be careful about this side. In, the, in this title, so what you calculate is correct answer. Never forget the negative of the equation. Or negative equation. And then, because there are two negatives, this negative and that, then we get them multiplied and changes to positive.